Okay, I wanted to show you guys a little bit about the, um, the organs that we find inside of these rabbits when we open them up. Same pieces and parts as, as all of the other species. Something you might see that's really, really weird right now. Um, these lungs have been removed from the animals, the, the lungs and the hearts, and you can still see the hearts beating. Well, obviously, it doesn't require a brain because they're not connected to the brain. Um, but this is just leftover energy that's inside the muscle itself, as well as some um, uh, different elements and how they're reacting, uh, kind of using up the last of it. So imagine that a vehicle uh, is out of gas, but there's still a little bit of left in the tank, and it's just kind of limping along, with maybe with what's left in the uh, in the carburetor or whatever. So uh, these will eventually stop. Um, the big thing that I want to show you is. Um, is the size of these. Now all three of these rabbits were the same size pretty much. Yeah, same. Um, same size, same age. Different health issues. Uh, if we look at good healthy lung tissue, we'll see that it's, um, it should be pink to pale uh, red. Um, it should be clear of any spots or lesions. Um, this, this set of lungs right here actually is really spongy. And it's spongy because there was a lot of um, a lot, of, a lot of air in the lungs, but also we can see some areas that are kind of dead and see those kind of purpley areas. Those are areas where um, the animals had uh, pneumonia, and pneumonia is something that uh, we see a lot in animals that are in uh, confinement situations. You know, air quality uh, changes from time to time. They get a little bit of cold. We're constantly looking for rabbits that have runny noses and uh, the sniffles and sneezes and those types of things. Respiratory issues happen. Um, this is a very, look at the, the size of the heart in relationship to the size of the lungs on this rabbit. This rabbit had been sick a few times. Um, you can see the little lesions uh, that are on there. Um, you can see that it kind of looks like little pock marks and that type of thing. Nothing that you would condemn the carcass for. Um, you can see the difference in the, the lung tissue there. So um, this is totally uh, not normal but not unsafe. This is not a, a food safety issue. This is just a matter of um, this animal had uh, pretty heavy pneumonia at one time. Probably a, nor a more normal set of lungs here in the middle. And then one set of lungs that looks really different. Um, uh, pretty spongy but has a lot of air. And I imagine as we cut through people say, oh, well, you're letting all the, the air out like they're a big balloon. But um, they're not. They're just tissue with a bunch of small holes that fill uh, with air. And as I squeeze that, um, I don't know how close I can get to that, but as I squeeze that, um, you can actually see uh, the vessels uh, puff up as that air leaves the set of lungs. So uh, three different looks, all different, um, different reasons that they look that way. Last set of intestines that I want to pull out just a little bit closer up. You guys can see uh, what all this stuff looks like. We'll start at the top and uh, work our way down. And if we look at the top of the, the tract, here's our esophagus. That's where all the food gets pushed down inside the stomach. Um, this is where the stomach starts to go ahead and work and break down that food. The ruminant animals that, that have a pellet have something called an antispiralis or a spiral colon. And as that, as that uh, food goes down through the tract, it spins it up into these little balls as it pulls the, the moisture out further down the track, but up, up high um, we have this track that, the part of the track that's filled with this kind of mushy liquid. Uh, I'm not going to open it up because it smells really, really bad. Um, and that's where that food's being broken down. Uh, nutrients are being um, pulled apart and then uh, going to be reused and sent back out to the animal system. There's that uh, uh, mesentery where the blood supply is going out pulling those nutrients and then pulling it back down into the bloodstream. So that's where that exchange is taking place. Inside here we have a, a kidney that is, uh, although not part of the digestive tract, uh, located in the same portion of the cat uh, cavity. There's two nice, clean, healthy kidneys uh, right there. Big liver. Uh, I tore the liver a little bit as I, as I pulled it out. You can see where that tissue was, has been torn. Tissue, the, the tissue's nice and clean and clear, no, no pox or anything. Gallbladder looks good, good dark um, color. They used to use the gall from beef cattle um, and put it into shampoos because the gall uh, actually works to break down fats, which is what you want um, a shampoo to do, is take the fat out of your hair. So just a little bit of a, of a history lesson there. Um, so pretty clean, healthy, uh, fresh digestive tract. Things look good.